Following Japan's attacks on Pearl Harbor, Malaya, Burma, Hong Kong, and the Philippines, Japanese forces pushed out a defensive perimeter across the Pacific, occupying many islands and archipelagos. After the Battle of Midway in June 1942, Japan found itself on the defensive as U.S., British, Australian, and New Zealand forces began the fight back across Southeast Asia and the Pacific. By the first half of 1944, the Allies had captured from the Japanese the British Solomon Islands, the Gilberts and Marshalls, and Papua New Guinea. But the Japanese were still firmly ensconced in the Philippines, the Caroline Islands, the Palau Islands, and the Marianas. The U.S. island-hopping campaign in the Pacific envisioned cutting through these defences to snatch the Marianas, which would enable U.S. B-29 superfortresses. To come within bombing range, the Japanese mainland. At the same time, General Douglas MacArthur's forces would advance through New Guinea towards the Philippines. Saipan is the largest island in the northern Marianas. In 1944, it was garrisoned by 32,000 Japanese troops under the command of Lieutenant General Yoshitsugu Saito. And consisted of the 43rd Infantry Division of three regiments, the 47th Independent Mixed Brigade of three battalions, the 9th Tank Regiment, plus abundant artillery and mortar units. Saipan was also the headquarters of the Imperial Japanese Navy's Central Pacific Fleet, commanded by Vice Admiral Chuichi Nogumo, former commander of the Carrier Battle Group, who oversaw the Pearl Harbor operation and the defeat at Midway. The Japanese suspected that an attack was coming, but not against the Marianas. They believed the Americans would instead strike at the Carolines. So the assault on Saipan came as an unpleasant surprise. The U.S. assembled a massive force to invade Saipan. Admiral Raymond Spruance commanded the Fifth Fleet and would land the Fifth Amphibious Corps, totaling seventy-one thousand men, on the island, consisting of the Second Marine Division. The Fourth Marine Division and the U.S. Army's 27th Infantry Division. Japanese defenses on Saipan were nonetheless formidable, as befitting its status as an important logistics hub. The beaches were killing grounds, with bunkers, interconnected trenches, and barbed wire entanglements. The beaches and foreshore covered by numerous artillery weapons and machine gun emplacements. Japanese troops had also constructed further defences inland in the island's rugged, mountainous interior. Saipan would be the toughest nut that the Americans had yet attempted to crack. The Japanese garrison was expected to fight to the death, and Saipan would be the scene of the largest banzai charge of the war. U.S. naval forces began the pre-invasion bombardment of the island on the 13th of June, 1944. The combined firepower of 15 battleships flayed the island with 165,000 shells. But those superficially impressive Japanese bunkers and pillboxes stood up well to the battering, as had been the case on other Pacific islands. The landings commenced at 0700 hours on the 15th of June 1944, with 8,000 Marines coming ashore on the west coast. But the Japanese defences were strong. Pre-registered artillery and mortars hit the Americans hard, and machine gun pillboxes and infantry in trenches fought tenaciously and to the death. By the end of D-Day, the Marines had carved out a beachhead six miles wide and half a mile deep. 
In an effort to destroy this bridgehead, the Japanese mounted a strong counterattack the night of the 15th to 16th of June, but the Marines fought them off, inflicting heavy losses. On the 16th, the U.S. Army's 27th Division commenced landings and fought inland to capture Aslito Airfield. General Saito ordered another counterattack, but when this failed, Saito gave up the airfield and withdrew. At this point, the Imperial Japanese Navy's carrier force decided to try and destroy the U.S. naval forces gathered at Saipan. Admiral Suimo Toyoda's assault dubbed the Battle of the Philippine Sea was a complete foul-up. So many Japanese aircraft were shot down that U.S. pilots took to calling the battle the Great Mariana's Turkey Shoot. The Japanese also lost three precious aircraft carriers. Japan's defeat at sea meant that Saipan was now isolated and could expect no relief. But General Saito was determined to make the Americans pay a hefty price in blood for the island, concentrating his surviving forces at the island's highest point, Mount Topochao. The Japanese turned the volcanic caves into bunkers, moving around unseen and usually attacking at night. The fighting was severe, with three features in particular earning grim nicknames from the U.S. troops that fought on and over them. Hell's Pocket, Purple Heart Ridge, and Death Valley. The Americans burned Japanese troops out of their positions with flamethrowers, and Sherman tanks and artillery blasted Japanese positions into silence. By the 6th of July, General Saito was running out of options. His slow and steady American advance had reduced his garrison from 32,000 to about 4,000 men still capable of fighting, along with several thousand wounded. Saito decided that the moment had come to die. He ordered a massive Banzai charge to swamp the forward American positions in a terrible do-or-die final attack. At dawn on the 7th of July 1944, 4,000 heavily armed, grim-faced Japanese soldiers gathered at their start lines. To the sounds of bugle calls, and with regimental colours flying, the Japanese soldiers charged the U.S. front lines, screaming and yelling as they came on, officers with swords drawn leading the charge. The U.S. 105th Infantry Regiment was swamped by shooting and stabbing Japanese troops. Its 1st and 2nd Battalions were virtually annihilated in hand-to-hand -hand fighting, losing over 650 killed and wounded. But U.S. resistance was also fierce. More Japanese troops, the wounded and the sick, added themselves to the charge, but U.S. infantry, machine guns, artillery and mortars scythed down hundreds as the Banzai charge tried to pour forward. The assault developed into a 15-hour ordeal that saw the deaths of 4,300 Japanese troops. Saipan was effectively lost. General Saito, along with his staff, committed suicide in a cave along with Vice Admiral Nagumo. 29,000 Japanese were killed in the battle or committed suicide. The Americans lost 2,949 killed and 10,464 wounded, their biggest casualty returned so far in the Pacific War. Some Japanese held out, Captain Sake Oba and 46 soldiers, only surrendering on Saipan on the 1st of December 1945, three months after the Japanese surrender and 16 months after the island of Saipan had fallen to U.S. forces. The loss of Saipan had serious repercussions in Japan. Prime Minister General Hideki Tojo and his cabinet resigned on the 18th of July 1944. With the capture of Saipan, U.S. B-29s could begin to rain destruction down on the home islands. The Japanese defensive perimeter in the Pacific having been resolutely pierced. When, on November 24, 1944, the first superfortresses took off from this center of the Marianas, they could at last head directly for the heart of the empire whose savage grip had reached so far into the Pacific. Saipan was our air springboard for Tokyo. This island had given our Pacific flyers the first chance to strike at the Japanese home.
From that time on, with hundreds of our giant bombers, we began the final destruction of a war machine that had once hoped to wipe out our civilization. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and share, and also help support my channel at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box.